You want to know how the materials that go into the oven. You want to know the design of the oven. You want to know the location of the oven. So design, do you want to make pizza or do you want to bake bread? There's two ways of doing this. You can look at these ovens as a crucible that creates a hot environment, very much like your kitchen oven. You turn it on, it's hot. As long as it's on, it's hot. You can make an, uh, an oven that is thin-shelled, quick heating, and as long as there's a fire in it, it will bake pizza. But we call it a pizza oven. If you want to bake bread, we change the design a little bit, we put a lot more mass in it, and the idea is there is no fire. You're baking on accumulated heat. If you're a, the kind of person that works until 5 o'clock and wants to make pizza at 7, maybe 6.30, you build a thin-walled oven with a, with a not-so-deep floor, you throw small, very dry wood in there, and bang, you've got a very hot environment. All you have to do is get the floor warm enough to make your pizza. And the rolling of the fire over the top will reflect down and heat everything. But when the fire goes out, you don't really have anything. You might be able to cook something slowly, but your oven is going to cool off very, very rapidly. I would call that the Mediterranean. Let's call that a lightweight oven, a Mediterranean oven. Some Mediterranean ovens are very massive and they bake long, you know, they store heat. So when you get in out of the Mediterranean region into northern Europe and in areas of North America, including here, you have to heat your home and therefore firewood and fuel gathering is very, very valuable to you. And of course, heating your home is a matter of life and death. So you want something a little more efficient. So what we do there, so we have the, in design, we have the Mediterranean, and I'll just put Med, okay? And then up here we'll put Northern Euro. Okay, Northern European ovens are heat accumulating ovens. They're very massive. The ceiling is much lower, so you get more radiation, and um, you build a very rapid fire, they have a chimney on them, they're very sophisticated with grates and dampers, and they control the air, and what you're doing is you're building heat into your mass. And uh, these ovens can weigh three tons residentially, eight to 12 tons, mini commercial, or crazy 20, 30 tons. What happens is you invest in the flywheel, lots of fuel, you heat that oven up, you need to be baking a lot. So you're kind of a slave to this system because it takes so much fuel to get it to temperature. But your heating, if it's properly designed and well insulated, you could bake for two days. Your cycle could go from six, seven hundred degree food down to 200 degree beans or squashes or whatever. Um, you know, so you can also do that in the Mediterranean oven, but realize that your heat is going to go up very quickly and it's going to go down very rapidly. The Northern European oven is the heat is going to go up slowly, but it's going to go down. For example, I have a Mediterranean oven at home. I can build a fire in it. I can make some pizza. I can put a couple of shank bones in there with some meat on it, what, osso or something like that, or something with a bone in it, not a chicken, but, and come back the next day, the oven's down to like 100, but the food's cooked, but that's about, but the oven's 100. Northern European oven, well insulated, I can, it takes me almost 30 hours to get the oven saturated up to 650 degrees, which is my baking temperature, and then I only lose one degree an hour for, it, it, it could go 12, 14 days. So that's kind of the difference. We're kind of building here a combination. We're taking an antiquated design using local clay and sand, and we're using a design that's come from anthropology, a French, French, maybe an architect, engineer, I don't know what he was, but he, went around France, this is very recent, the last 12 years, he went around France and documented all the um, 
ancient ovens. This is pre-industrial revolution. This is like maybe 16, 1700s at the, at the latest. He documented all the ovens and found trends in shape and size, and that's what we're going to do today. He compiled it all into a database and, um, and created this design, and, and it's very general, and so that's what we're going to use. Do you want to make pizza in your oven, or do you want to make bread in your oven? Bread. Bread? So you'd go for a lower ceiling. You get more reflection. If you want to make pizza in the oven, then you make a 15-inch ceiling because you get that, that kind of parabola reflection. That's, that's kind of what it's all about, is, is reflecting heat down onto the oven floor. 15 inch will work fine for bread. It's just that the lower the ceiling is for bread, my oven at home is 11 and a half inches high. What happens here is, with the clay, we have, we were, we're creating a sphere, which is the strong, we're trying to create the strongest um, item we can make with the materials given and therefore I feel that a perfect sphere is right. Our diameter is 27 inches across and so our dome will be half of 27, 13 and a half. The way we're going to proceed is we're going to, the, Patrick has a trailer down there that he claims I built an oven on 10 or 12 years ago and it started falling apart recently. I don't know the history of it, but he cleaned off the top and the floor is still intact. So we're going to build a cob oven. The tradition that I use, my source is the bread ovens of Quebec. It's a book you can buy online. And I think it's, it's an anthropological study of the Quebecois culture on the Tadoussac River, which is a north and south tributary runs north of the St. Lawrence. They have a lot of these clay ovens and some of them they claim are hundreds of years old and the system is to find the right kind of clay. That's the secret and to know how to install it. So the bread ovens of Quebec talk about the culture and everything but there's a the, the body of the book is how to do one of these ovens and the only outside influences, California. There's a guy out there named Kiko Denzer. Anybody know him? He wrote the book, Clay Bread Ovens. Kiko Denzer, D-N-Z-R. He's a very cool guy. The nice thing about it is it's just like everything else that's under publication. The first book he wrote. The second book, his customers wrote. The third book, his customers wrote. So you get all the feedback, you know, of and so each edition is improvements. We have always taken the straw right to the surface of the chamber, the baking chamber. And I was in uh, Germany working with a clay expert there, a guy who actually goes around and restores clay buildings all over Europe. And he said, yes, take the straw all the way to the surface. Well, the Californians have decided that it's just a sand and clay mix, a two inch shell over the form. So we're going to build a sand form to the Quebecois principle and then we're going to mix clay and sand together and we're going to install this fairly dry mix in a two inch shell all over our sand form and we're going to pack that very nicely with our hands and maybe hit it with some trowels or some boards. It's got to be well compressed according to Mr. Denzer and then he said proceed as usual. So we will make um, cob. Only it's different than cob because I called it cob at a workshop and a woman said this is not cob. Cob you have donkey stomp on it and you chop the clay up and you have little pieces. So I said well this is oriented cob. So we call it OSC, oriented strand cob. And what we'll be doing is we'll take this initial clay sand mix that we mix with our feet and we will, that will all be in a pile and we will all get on our knees around the pile and we will grab a handful of mortar and a handful of straw and we will knead this like you would knead a loaf of bread and you distribute the clay in and then you will have this kind of 
log and it'll have straw sticking out both ends, but it'll, the bulk of it will be the clay, say clay and sand with the straw in it. And we will place that around the, the, the dome, okay? And this is very, very important to me that we overlap and place these, we'll call them, uh, what should we call them? Batards. That's a baking term, right? They look, they look kind of like a batard. They're about this big. We don't want them this big. These batards are laid around and then we take our fingers and we poke. So you have, in the end, you have this centrical matrix and then you have it poked in places where it links into all the others and they overlap. And then the, you have two here, bing, bing. The next one goes on top. Somebody's going to be mixing and making these things. Somebody else is going to be delivering them to the job station. And somebody else, a couple people, are going to be very carefully placing these things with my watchful good eye. You said you had two inches of that sand and clay. Mm -hmm. And then how thick is the uh, cob? Ooh, well, I would probably shoot for eight, eight to ten. That would, should give you a, enough of a, a heat accumulation to, uh, to bake some bread. It's not going to heat up very quickly because, you see, if you just had a thin shell, which you really can't do with clay, if you had a thin shell and then insulation, it would heat up very, very fast. But if you have 10 inches of mass, you're in competition. Your oven chamber, you want the heat in your oven chamber, but your mass is absorbing the heat. It's pulling it. Part of the reason the straw is also the bones of the structure, but the straw is also hollow and provides insulation. So it provides kind of a double. It's like an insulator and a mass, and it gives the whole thing strength. And that's kind of, kind of why we like, like to use this straw technique. So the deal is we're going to go outside and we're going to get some water in buckets. Somebody can do that. We're going to shovel some clay onto the tarp and add some water. We're supposed to have warm water down there. And we're going to stomp this stuff. We're going to stomp it to a pudding. Some of us will stomp clay and some of us will start building the, uh, the form. Okay, shall we go outside?